Angela's Mitchell from Multiply Project Proposal, Evaluation of the Health of the Estuarine Ecosystem Environment of Wilson Bay, Jacksonville, North Carolina, Utilizing Inexpensive Citizen Science Tools, Methods, and Application of Scientific Standards and Parameters. Talk about the purpose of the study. Learn about the New River Estuary, Wilson Bay, Coastal Salt Marshes and Estuaries, and Citizen Science for Water and Sediment Quality. I will review the project study and materials and methods. Then I will provide expected results and deliverables. Wilson Bay is located on the New River Estuary and at the Brackish and Freshwater Interface in the Estuary in Onville County on the coastal plain of North Carolina. Until 2001, it served as a discharge site for Jacksonville's Municipal Wastewater Treatment Facility and is a short distance from eight additional treatment plants that served Camp Lejeune. Wastewater discharges from fecal waste levels, degraded water conditions, accelerated eutrophication, depleted benthic oxygen levels, and reduced the support of benthic organisms. Today, it is used for recreational fishing, commercial crab fishing, boating, and closely monitored by the city of Jacksonville. Evaluate the health of the estuarine environment of Wilson Bay. This will be done using inexpensive citizen science tools while utilizing scientific methods and standard applications to be able to present a guide that will empower and educate concerned citizens, educators, and students to advance conservation efforts. The is on the New River Estuary. It lies entirely within Onslow County, North Carolina. This means that unlike other systems, it is not fed by rivers and streams outside of the county. This makes it unusual. It is considered one of the top four most eutrophic estuaries in the southeast, and in part due to it being, in, being enclosed. It's a fifth order black water stream with one to two foot shallow mes meso and polyhaline lagoons. At the base or entrance, it has barrier islands that require frequent dredgings and create sediment shifts. The uppermost part is surrounded by urban environments of impervious surfaces that release runoff during weather events. Its low tidal amplitude with the freshwater discharges create vertical stratification in the water column and bottom hypox hypoxia. The city of Jacksonville had a wastewater treatment plant within the bay that directly emptied raw sewage. Camp Lejeune had six wastewater treatment plants along the estuary doing the same thing. My study portion of this estuary is in Wilson Bay. It is located at the brackish freshwater interface of the estuary. It is used as a recreational water source for boating, fishing, swimming, and commercial fishing until the late 1990s. It was the site for the city of Jacksonville's wastewater treatment plant that emptied raw sewage into the bay. It was closed to recreation and commercial fishing at the time due to high fecal waste levels that exceeded environmental standards. High organic material loads have only accelerated eutrophication and significantly reduced organism support. In the early 1990s, concentrated animal operations, or CAOs, specifically swine production, when it was second in production, had an accidental overflow and dam breakage during a weather event that emptied into Wilson Bay. After that event, testing showed no significant effects. It's a testimony to how bad the conditions were on the bay. Estuaries are highly productive in complex ecosystems with fresh and salt water mixing. Salinities can range from less than 5 to as high as 35 parts per thousand, depending on how near fresh and ocean water sources they are. Our North Carolina estuaries in this area have a low topography that make them only within a few feet of sea level. Temperature and sunlight, therefore, will affect the condition of plants that regulate carbon and elevation within an estuary. But this is important to climate change factors such as sea level rise and increasing temperatures. Environmental factors also control the distribution of habitats. Sediment deposition and organic matter accumulation must also match or surpass sea level rise or elevation, or habitats can drown. Estuaries are important sources of carbon sequestration and productivity with sediment buildup above sea level rise to positively influence juvenile fisheries. To combat negative influences, it is important to have guidance for restoration efforts and maintenance to anticipate sea level rise in order to implement best practices and understanding its ecological processes. An integral role in the maintenance of estuaries, 
The lack of water quality data at national, regional, and international levels is challenging for governments to maintain over time. The use of data collection and long-term monitoring costs can be too expensive for many individuals and citizen scientists. And long-term monitoring for governments means long-term budgets for staff and expensive equipment. Citizen science tools can successfully reveal insights into estuary ecosystem health, fish abundance, and anthropogenic effects if managed effectively. Various inexpensive tools can be utilized and include homemade devices, remote sensing applications, Arduino-based electronic devices, and other inexpensive store-bought devices. This is on the data gathered by the City of Jacksonville that closely monitors Wilson Bay. The Sturgeon City Environmental Center that now occupies remnants of the old wastewater treatment plant hosts educational programs and summer camps to the public to educate about Wilson Bay and the New River Estuary. My project seeks to evaluate the health of Wilson Bay's ecosystem by testing and analyzing water quality, plankton, juvenile fin fish counts, and sediment coring using citizen science tools with scientific standards and parameters. I will ultimately develop a guide for a citizen science program to continue to monitor and improve estuary ecosystems. From three to five foot depths taken from sounding data from USGS. These depths were taken into consideration for building field collection tools, the Secchi disk, Plankton Net, and Martin PVC Sediment Coring Device 1.0. It is important to ensure there is enough line, marked in meters, to measure, as well as ensuring the sediment coring device can reach the bottom without falling in. Samples were taken from a 14-foot canoe borrowed from the city of Jacksonville. Samples were collected bi-weekly on Wednesdays from March 29th to May 5th, 2023, based on equipment availability, plankton DL migration patterns that occur from dusk to midnight, and boating safety. They're used to collect water and sediment. A secchi disc made from wood, resin, and a fishing weight was used to determine water clarity and turbidity. The Martin Sediment Coring Device 1.0 was made and modified from its original design from PVC pipe and T12 polycarbonate tubing. The plankton net was designed on various measurement parameters from professional net design and used materials from the dollar store and Amazon and an unused socket from my toolbox. An Arduino-based water quality data logger was built, but coding proved difficult to accomplish during this project timeline. This demonstrates that while inexpensive, testing needs to occur heavily before deployment and can take time. Other equipment I had or can be purchased inexpensively was an infrared digital thermometer gun, salinity refractometer, refractometer compound microscope, and what I think is the most fun, a USB digital microscope, I can take images and measurements from my samples. Computer and iPhone applications were also used to determine navigation, GPS location, and environmental parameters. By first developing a map in Google Earth, then overlaying a two centimeter by two centimeter grid with a letter number combination, then Excel chose the locations randomly, which were then plotted on the Google Earth map. Field data collection sheets were based on NOAA's Observer Field Data Sheets and customized for this project. Field data gathered, gathered included GPS location, date and time, air temperature, wave height, wind speed and direction, cloud cover percentage, moon phase, estimated tow speed, sample depth, water salinity, and surface water temperature that were taken 10 times to determine average, mean, and median at each location. The data was then collated and put into Excel and then RStudio is used to then analyze the data. Sediment were done at home after transporting samples in coolers. Samples were either frozen or refrigerated in my refrigerator until processing. I used a Lamotte estuary monitoring kit and 16 parameter water test strips to evaluate water quality. Sediment samples were analyzed using the Munsell soil color chart for sediment color. Grain size was determined by touch. A soil testing kit from Lowe's determined nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and pH, and smear slides created to examine sediment under microscope to analyze grain size and mineral type. Plankton was measured using the 100 count method under microscope. Their biomass was measured by filtering plankton from the sample and weighing before and after. Additional data was provided by the city of Jacksonville, who uses professional and expensive equipment for historical data and to validate my collection and results. This included data from their data sond, thin fish counts from trawling, and sediment elevation data from a set tool.
results to show that Wilson Bay's ecosystem has undergone trauma and damage. However, due to the city of Jacksonville's dedication to improve its condition, it, shows show, it should show improvement. More can be done to improve the ecosystem habitat for marine organisms and plants. This will be important for climate change factors impacting the ecosystem with rising sea levels and temperatures. By employing concerned citizens, educators, and students in a volunteer citizen science program, the city can continue to advance the health of Wilson Bay. Use of inexpensive and easily attainable citizen science tools in an organized program structure can offset the cost to both the city and volunteers. Work could not have been done alone. I would like to thank Pat Donovan Brandenburg and Aaron Huron from the City of Jacksonville Stormwater Department for providing historical data and information about Wilson Bay, equipment provisions, and their support. My savvy field assistants, Chandler Hardley and Mary Mitchell, for assistance with canoe logistics, navigation, and field sample collection. It was a very enjoyable experience. For Tim Martin, Polar Trek teacher and designer of the Martin PVC Sediment Coring Device 1.0, for his guidance on the device build, sediment analysis, and support. Attention and for bearing with me through my long project presentation. My cited references are here for my project. Have a great evening.